Now, Illinois' uh, third congressional district is actually a pretty safe Democratic district. Now, the incumbent, Dan Lipinski, uh, has won the last several elections by pretty comfortable margin. It helps that he's either been running unopposed or running against uh, terrible Republicans. <laughs> so, now the Republicans, at this point, have thought, hey man, we're just going to leave this whole thing alone. Except for one man, Art Jones. Now, Jones is running unopposed in a Republican par uh, primary race, who they will, he will then uh, go on to take on Dan Lipinski. Now, Jones also happens to be a literal Nazi. The Chicago Sun-Times described the candidate and retired insurance agent Arthur Jones as, quote, an outspoken Holocaust denier, activist anti-Semite, and white supremacist. Yeah, that would appear to uh, that that would appear to fit the criterion of a Nazi. Now he told the newspaper that he was also a former leader. If you're if this is not clear enough, that he was a former leader of the American Nazi Party, and that his current group, America First Committee, bars Jewish people from joining. I would say that's pretty pretty clear. There's more. Jones campaign website includes a section titled Holocaust question mark that features photocopy pages for typewritten flyers that describe the Holocaust racket as quote the biggest blackest lie in history. Look, uh, you go so far right <laughs> and you get into that Pandora's box and what comes out of that box? Anti-Semitism. It always happens. You go so far to the right, that's where you end up. <laughs> you know, and if you didn't notice already, that's actually what globalist stands for. And what do you think they're talking about when they talk about the globalists? They're talking about Jews. They're talking about the, when they go after the global financial elite. Who are they talking about? They're talking about the Jews, okay? The whole alt-right movement especially is filled, is dripping with anti-Semitism. But this guy, I don't think he uh, really identifies as alt-right. He just says, no, I'm just a Nazi. Well, hey, at least he's honest about it. Now, he also suggests that a few professional concentration camp survivors continue to promote this conspiracy. Notice, professional concentration camp survivors. It's not real. Never happened. It's actually a lie. <laughs> Now, where have we heard that kind of thing before? Oh, right. It's what many in the right, including Alex Jones, InfoWars, for example, say about every kind of school shooting, right? Oh, they're just paid actors. It's not real. It didn't actually happen. No, no, it's a false flag. It's a false flag operation to make you what? Well, I guess in the case of gun control, he's, he makes the argument that, well, they want to take your guns. Okay, what's the argument for denying the Holocaust? Something that we have documented proof that we have video up that we've seen news reels and you could go to the places where they gassed people auschwitz um and again there's pictures of just i mean horrible pictures horrific things of jewish people getting rounded up and, and putting into these gas chambers i mean there were stories um and, and it's really difficult to think about um where they would have gas and, and, and these people would take 10, 15, 20 minutes to die in, in, in just absolute agony. It's horrific. And to sit there and deny that, of course, that makes you an absolutely disgusting person. Uh, but anyway, again, if you also deny Sandy Hook, you're also a pretty fucking terrible person. But anyway, now, when asked by the Sun-Times about his views, because again, they were very curious, like, hey, you're you're a Holocaust denier, you're a white supremacist, you're pretty much a Nazi. Like, what, what gives? What gives? Here's his answer. He explained that he's, quote, running for Congress, not for Chancellor of Germany. What, what, what does that even mean? And by the way, let's hope he's not. Last time that happened, it turned out to be very, very bad for the world. Now, of course, Germany is a lot, lot different than it was before. Um... Germany is actually a very strong democracy. 
Um, and they actually go and they look at their history and they're very shameful of that history. And they're very open to admitting that, yes, this happened. And guess what? We don't want this to happen ever, ever again. And, you know, this is a black stain on our history. And so, hey, man, look, they actually confront their past. And here in America, when it comes to, for example, the horrors of slavery and the Confederacy, we have people out there that are erasing that past. And so, and say, what are you talking about? It never happened. No, no, the slaves were actually treated very, very well. They were fed very well. They're well fed when they were enslaved and building the White House. Ugh. Disgusting. Uh, but anyway, so this guy, uh, Art, <laughs> uh, is running as, uh, again, a Republican, right? But this isn't the first time he's ran. He's actually ran several times. In fact, this is the eighth time, according to Raw Story, that the 70-year-old candidate has run for Republican primary in Illinois, 3rd District, all of which he obviously lost. Well, good. Wait, it, you might be asking, can the Republicans run somebody else? I mean, why are they running an, a, a Nazi? Well, I'm going to get to their answer in a minute. Uh, but look, Lipinski is an incumbent. He's in a very strong Democratic district, a very safe district. So... The chances of a normal Republican beating him are actually very, very low. So I think most Republicans decide, eh, I'm not going to run. But at least, I don't know, maybe save some face by running somebody to beat the Nazi. <laughs> and look, they did that in 2012. In fact, there was a three-way race uh, where you had Richard Grabowski, who was the eventual winner. He got 39% of the vote uh, when running against Dan Lipinski. That's decent. Um, wasn't a complete blowout. <laughs> Uh, but uh, he got, in this primary, 59% of the votes. That's about 20,000 votes. You had uh, Jim Falvey, who uh, was another Republican, getting 29% of the vote. That's 10,000 votes. And then Jones. Jones received 11% of the Republican vote. That is 3,861 votes. So over almost 4,000 people in Illinois, the 3rd District, these are Republicans, said, you know what? I'm going to vote for that guy. I, I like the Nazi. I'll pick him. D dude, you know that number should be zero. But to be fair, the Republican Party itself has come out very, very strongly against Jones. I actually really like their quote here. And they mince no words, by the way. This is uh, Tim Schneider, spokesman for the uh, Illinois Republican Party, at least for the 3rd District, uh, he said, our chapter and our country have no places for Nazis like Arthur Jones. We strongly oppose his racist views and his candidacy for any public office, including the 3rd Congressional District. That is a very strong position. <laughs> Again, give him credit on that. Although, maybe I shouldn't because going against a Nazi and denouncing Nazis is pretty much the easiest thing that you can do. Hey, maybe we should tell our president that, who seems somewhat reluctant, or who seems somewhat reluctant to be able to do that. Again, remember Charlottesville, when you had actual neo-Nazis and KKK members and white supremacists that were marching in Charlottesville, and what did the president say? Well, some on both sides were very fine people. No. There, there are no fine Nazis. <laughs> Again, Tim Schneider said it best. There is no place for Nazis in America. Um, and unfortunately, Trump, however, and some on the hard right seem to uh, beg to differ. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.